everybody, and welcome to Confidently Controversial. It's a podcast starring me, Emily Paul, and my best friend, Kimberly, Kimberly Tweed. You're stepping on my oh, intro. Sorry. God, oh, forget sorry. it. We're done here. This is move it. on. I quit. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. How are you, Kim? Oh, I'm good. I'm really good. It's the weekend. It's the freaking weekend, baby. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, real quick, before we go any further, uh-huh. can you just tell people what this podcast is? Oh, I'll try. Um, so Confidently Controversial is this, like, big, like, crazy idea that the movies we watched when we were children were, like, weird <laughs> and had some crazy impact on our brains and stuff. And we just like to rewatch movies and talk about them and see what kind of stuff was being filtered into our tiny, impressionable, cute little pink brains. Right, that now are these old grade brains filled with anxiety and woe. And woe. <laughs> woe. <laughs> woe. <laughs> woe. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the show. But we also, we banter. We talk. We try. Yeah, we do. Because yeah. we're best friends. That's right. We're best friends. People let me tell you about my best friend. It's me. <laughs> um. So what's been going on? How are you doing? Nothing. Did you see, Um. so I mean, I think the main news this week is all Gypsy Rares related. Kim, my movie is actually chosen. Based. Because of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. No. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so on trend. I hate it. Oh, my gosh. Well, let's talk a little bit about that. I know. Now, did you... I saw the documentary. I saw the movie, like, the TV series. Right. Like, the, the ver- act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that had... Um, Patricia Arquette. Yes. Friend of the pod, Patricia Friend Arquette. Friend of the pod. <laughs> Who's, who was the little girl? Gypsy um, Rose. Joey King. Okay. Um, she's a big time actress. She's yeah. been lots of stuff. Um, she was the little girl. And I remember, um, I mean, it came out a couple of years ago. And shortly after that, I believe, is when Gypsy Rose went to prison. Maybe. I think it, because I remember you watching it and you wanted me to watch it. But I was like, well, I already saw the documentary. So I already like know all the things that are going to happen. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So I kind of didn't feel like watching. I watched it vicariously through you. Right. Um. But the documentary, so for people who don't know about Gypsy Rose Blanchard, pretty famous case of Munchausen by proxy. Correct. Which is when, um, there's been other depictions of it in film. I think the other biggest one is, of course, in um, the one where he sees dead people. What's that one? The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense, because remember the little girl's haunting him, and then he goes and he finds out that the mom actually killed the daughter because the mom was, like, keeping the daughter Um, sick. I've only seen that movie one time. Oh, okay. Well... It's a it's a depiction of Munchausen okay. by proxy. Oh, interesting. Um, but yeah, Munchausen by proxy is when like a parent keeps a child sick because they get they or they they find their self worth and get attention from that illness. Yes, it's the I think it's the attention. Yeah, yeah. Because you have a lot of doctors and medical professionals and you know important people paying attention to you and listening to you. So um, and I remember in this like. She had like a feeding tube. Oh yeah, and there were, and she was told she couldn't walk, but she was being drugged to, um, you know, to keep her in bed. And then I think she found the internet. Yes. Well, they shaved her head. Like they shaved her head. Like the mom would say yeah. that she would say that she was younger than she was. Wouldn't yeah. feed her to keep her. Th- like skinny and small. And then ultimately, she met someone online and convinced that person to. Like, that person became her boyfriend. Yes. And then um, either together or, I guess, separately, because he's still in jail and she's not. Um, They killed them all. Yeah. I think it was kind of Gypsy Rose just didn't see any other way out of the situation. Yeah. I mean, she was a a prisoner of her own home and her circumstances, for sure. And obviously impacted greatly by everything that was happening to her. So, you know. Yeah, and I think in all the interviews, the things that I've read her talking now, that she's out of jail, she is able to vocalize a remorse and to say, you know, to talk about how she just didn't know anything else to do. And I do think that that's probably why she is out of jail and the other person who killed the mom is not out of jail. And um, so she's married now. She is. She has a husband who she she married while she was in prison and he picked her up from prison. Yes. Always a weird thing for me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, that's a weird person that's just falls in love with someone in jail. Well, again, too, though, I feel like it's like a certain type of person who is sees an opportunity. Sure. 
And I worry, that's what I worry about is like some dude on the outside was just like, oh, well, I'm going to connect with this person. Right. On the, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's, what are you going to get? What do you get out of it? Well, it's not like she has like a ton of money or anything. I don't know what she has. But they're like doing, the, um, they're in New York City now because guess what? What? I started following her on Instagram. Of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> the first time it was offered to me as an option, I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then it came around again and I was like, all right, Gypsy Rose, let's see what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, she's in New York City. She's seeing the sights. She um, has like a podcast connect coming up or either she already recorded it or it's coming up with um, like her outlet of choice, which I think is very interesting is um, Nick Vial's podcast. I don't know who that is. He is a former contestant on The Bachelor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know she was watching in prison. <laughs> right, right, right. So I... Uh, Those prison ladies love The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> He's very handsome. Um, he was one of my faves. I also follow him on Instagram already. <laughs> How old is Gypsy Rose? I don't know. I don't really I think either. She's, I think she's pretty young. She seems pretty young, but I also think that she's definitely delayed. I don't know. She's maybe caught up at this point. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I remember, because she was in the documentary. Okay. And, like, they didn't, the mom did not educate, like, they kept her out of school. Yeah, Because yeah, she yeah. would say she had all these medical problems. Uh -huh. She would, I think they were on that show where she got, like, a free house. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, and, I, and she got to make a wish and stuff, I'm pretty sure. Like, I think she went to Disney. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, she did, because I saw something. You can't, you can't get that jealous of her, because, you know, she also had a monster for her mother. <laughs> no, I'm not jealous of her, but I know that she did, like, um, the Bippity Bobbity Boutique. Oh, yeah, I saw those pictures, And too. somebody was just like, who was working that day? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they didn't look too good. Yeah, they yeah. didn't look too good. And then the other ro the other um, news that came out this week was about that Natalia Rose or Natalia All these Grace roses. or something. Okay. Or maybe it's Natalia Grace, who was the little girl who was adopted by a family. I think it was in Florida. It seems like it would be in Florida. And they... She was like Romanian. I, I don't know the details. Oh, I like, oh I know. This is the one that that other movie is based on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, one yeah. where they she's older than what yes, they thought. Yes, yes, yes. Fascinating so, as well. So fascinating. So like this family had adopted this girl. Let's say Romania. Probably wrong. Um, and then they started to think she was older than she was because she has dwarfism. Yes. And they, for all intents and purposes, like kicked her out of the house. Yeah. But. They just did a DNA test. Turns out she's a hundred percent the that little bitch. person. No, she's um twenty two oh. or twenty three years oh, so old. So she was older. She was no, she was a child. Because back then she was only like nine years old. Like she was a kid. Oh, oh man, what is that? What are those parents that get? <sighs> I mean, somebody went down like a crazy path. It was just like she's old. She's old. Get her out. Right. And old girls probably just like what? Yeah. Somebody had major regrets. Yeah. About just the choice they made. Oh. Yeah, rough. So oh. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Again, this you don't come to this podcast for facts. You come to this podcast for us being like, did you hear what happened? And then poorly telling you what happened. Yeah. So look cool. it up, folks. Look it up, folks. Yeah, that story. Crazy. Well, this is all. I'm really excited because of the... The movie I chose, I think, is very much on point with all of these things. I'm scared because you told me that I was going to be unhappy. Well, I, I changed the movie. Oh, since then? I changed the movie since okay. then. I'm still yes. probably going to be unhappy. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely think you're going to be unhappy. Okay. For sure. So this movie is from the early 80s. This is from 1981. Oh, okay. And we tend to differ with these movies because as I've posited in the past... Um, I had an older sister, so I feel like there yeah. were, I don't know, I, I feel like that impacted things somehow. So what you're saying, this is Heather's fault? No, this movie <laughs> is not Heather's fault. I don't know. I think I probably watched this movie. It was on TV, so okay. I think I watched it at that point. So I don't think I watched it in the early 80s. Okay. I very much remember watching this movie when I was a kid, and I did not understand it okay. when I first saw it. And it certainly impacted me. This was a movie I thought a lot about. Uh-huh. Um, and then it really wasn't until I was older and heard more about it uh -huh. that I really understood more what the movie was. And it's it's actually kind of um, 
It's a very famous movie. It's very famous. Um, it was 1981. This movie had a budget of approximately five million dollars. Okay. Um, and in terms of box office performance, it really it did well. 19 million in uh, North, just in North America. All right. And really, it had mixed critical reception. So this movie was supposed to be. This was supposed to be an Oscar contending role for its star. Okay. Like the star went into this movie like, this is my moment, this is my movie, uh-huh. and then it really actually went the other way. And because of how it was, when, when audiences saw it, instead of being like this drama, people were more receiving it like a comedy. Oh, no. And it became more like, almost like people were receiving it like a Rocky Horror movie, where people were going to the movie dressed up like it, and it became more camp. Oh, no. Uh, the LGBT community really embraced this movie at the time, because it was, um, you know, I actually looked up why they did. Uh-huh. Which, you know, I feel like it's one of those things where you're kind of like, oh, yeah, of course. But because it's camp, because at the time, like, the, it's, it's a female lead. Uh-huh. And the female lead is way over the top. And I think they were saying at that time, the gay rights movement was moving up. It has nothing to do with gay rights, though. Okay. Nothing to do with it. Okay. But that community really loved this movie a lot. Okay. (laughs) This film is based on a book Uh um, that was written in 1978. And I'm going to have to tell you a little bit about, I'm going to have to tell you what this movie is Really, to go further, do you have okay. any clue? Have I seen this movie? I don't know if you have, okay. but you've heard of it. You have to have heard of it because it's extremely famous for one line, no wire hangers. Oh, okay. Do you know it? It is. Mommy Dearest. Mommy Dearest. <gasps> oh. Have you seen it? N- no. No. <laughs> Are you but, interested in watching it? Because we're going to no. watch it. <laughs> um, we're no, going to watch it today. This was a movie that my mom referenced a lot when we were kids. Because I remember that No Wire Hangers thing. But I don't... I don't... It's Kath... What is, who, so Faye Dunaway plays Joan Crawford. Joan okay. Crawford is the... who. It's, it's a biopic. Uh-huh. It's a psychodrama. Uh-huh. Psychological drama. Uh-huh. Um, it's all about a book that was written by Joan Crawford's adopted daughter, Christina Crawford. Okay. Who alleged in this 1978 memoir that her mother was pretty abusive. And Joan Crawford was an actress? Joan Crawford was a very famous actress back in the golden age of cinema. Um, she was in a ton, she was in that, like, you know, back in the day when people were connected to all the different movie studios, she was Uh in a lot of different things. Her thing was that she would be in these movies where she was like a a scrappy kind of down on her luck person, (laughs) but she's kind of an interesting character. You know, she, um, started her career as a flapper Uh and she's really kind of known as being a, you know, she got in there, she was really gritty and she became like a really famous flapper dancer. A gritty flapper dancer. A gritty, famous flapper dancer. Sure. And then she transitioned over to cinema. cinema. Talkies. The, the talkies. <laughs> um, it, she's very memorable because of, she has a very memorable look with uh-huh. her eyebrows, very yeah. stark eyebrows. But her career actually went, I think it was like a 40 or 50 year career, because even as she got older... Um, she was still in movies. She actually was in horror movies. Huh. She was in um, that movie, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, with uh, with Betty Davis, with whom she had a... Fa- they famously hated each other. Okay. Which is interesting because... So Faye Dunaway is the actress who plays Joan Crawford in this film. Faye Dunaway, extremely famous. Yeah. She was in um, She was in Bonnie and Clyde, Chinatown, uh, Network... Tons and tons of movies. Okay. Beautiful actress. And, but people, you know, there's there's a lot of talk from this film that she maybe wasn't so nice. She was okay. maybe a little too much channeling of the Joan Crawford. Okay. Um, but they really make her look like Joan Crawford in this what's movie. It called? What, what's it called where people, uh, she's method? <laughs> they said she was method, but they said, she, I mean, there are books written about how terrible she was on this movie set. Oh, interesting. Yes. Like, and it's not even just this movie. She's kind of known for that throughout her career. Yeah. Okay. And if you read about her, some people are either like, yes, she's she's very serious about what she does. She demands perfection. You know, so it's one of those things. Well, that's why my, my question is, it strong, powerful woman stuff or is it true bad behavior? Well, a lot of the people who say bad things about her are other women. Okay. 
which, you know, that, that happens. Be, that happens. <laughs> but uh, going back to Betty Davis, so like I said, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford famously hated each other. They were in What Happened to Baby Jane together, which is a great movie. If anyone wants to go back and talk, go back and watch something like that, like it is a bit of a horror movie, but very interesting. Um, but Bet, uh, Betty Davis was on, she hated Faye Dunaway and oh, was she hated both of them she hated both of them okay she was on the tonight show and i guess johnny carson asked her about this movie yeah. and asked what she thought and she pretty much like tore faye dunaway a new one like okay. on johnny carson okay was just hmm. yeah i think crazy. i've seen that clip i think i've seen that okay but um, yeah, so it's it's really reading about this movie. You hear a lot about Faye Dunaway and just how terrible she was. You also hear so the about woman, Faye Dunaway. Yes, about how terrible Faye Dunaway okay. was. Joan Crawford. Now it's interesting. A lot of people saw this movie, and even when they read her book, had really strong reactions to it uh -huh. and thought that the daughter Christina. It was a hatchet job, and it was a little. It wasn't true, and it was a little oh. too extreme. Um, she had other, she had other, um, adopted children. So Christine, Christina, and then there's Christopher, uh -huh. both just, they were written out of Joan Crawford's will oh. and she, they did not have a good relationship, but then there was other daughters that she'd adopted, oh, so adopted. two twins okay. that she'd adopted and they were like, oh, she was fine. Uh -huh. But it still seems a little hinky. Like there is definitely something we, because right. other people do back up what Christina says. And, you know, we'll watch the movie. I just remember it being very extreme. Um, and at the time when I watched it, I did not understand that it was it wasn't supposed to be campy. But I saw it just as it was very disturbing to me as mm. a kid watching this movie. Right. Because it's she's abusive towards her little daughter in this movie. Okay. Like, very abusive. Okay. Where um, I just remember there's some very intense scenes in this. Huh. And I watched it when I was a little kid. You watched so, it when you were small? I was definitely a kid. I remember... I definitely remember it impacting me and then talking to other kids about it. Mm -hmm. And because the no wire hangers thing, I think was, it was out there. Like I think people yeah, said yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like, I felt like I was cool that I had seen it. And I remember like telling other kids about some of the things from it, some of the scenes from it. Oh God. Yeah, I know. It's, it's very, 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 very weird. Um, but this movie, oh man, this movie got a half a thumb, Kim. Half a thumb? <laughs> half a thumb from Roger Ebert. No. <laughs> yes, only a half a thumb. And the director, Frank Perry, actually tried to woo Roger Ebert oh. to get a good review oh, and like brought him on the set and like uh -huh. let him walk around, all this stuff. And then he was said to be very disappointed when he got his half a thumb. Yeah. But Roger Ebert cannot be bought. He cannot. He cannot be bought. Um, it had really mixed reception when it came out. Some of the critics definitely panned it. Others really thought Faye Dunaway did a great job. She does look a lot like her. Um, it ha does have a c huge cult following, but it's also um, it in its inaugural uh, Raz. You know the Razzies yes. that they give out every year. So in the it was the inaugural year of the Razzies no in 1981, and this yeah, and this movie won Worst Picture, Worst Actress for Dunaway, and Worst Supporting Actor. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, I'm very interested to see it. You definitely, in looking at the pictures of it, um, they really make Faye Dunaway look a lot like Joan Crawford. Is it black and white? No, it's in color. It's in color. It's in color. Um, but yeah, extremely, very, very interesting. Who else is in it? Nobody famous. Okay. Nobody famous. But interestingly, so like I said, so Christina Crawford wrote this book. She sold the rights. She wanted to write the screenplay for it, but they didn't, the, the director ended up not taking her version of the screenplay and going a different direction. When Christina was involved with the picture and Bancroft was lined up to uh -huh. be in it um, and to play Joan Crawford, but was going to do it a little bit less extreme. Uh-huh. Um, and then, which I think Christina Crawford wanted. Okay. Because it, it seems like there was, I don't know, it was her mom, but they also, um, who else was going to be in it? The other, who's the, the one who married Woody Allen? Mia Farrow? Mia Farrow was supposed to play the grown-up Christine in this, in it originally, but both backed out because of the material. They didn't like how the script kind of was going. Right. It probably is a pretty risky thing to star in a movie that's depicting someone else in the business that you're in. 
Right. As, you know, pr- poorly <clears throat> like that. Right. But Faye Dunaway, like, will not talk about this movie. In fact, like, to this day, you know, like, when she does an interview, uh-huh. it says in her rider, I will not answer any questions about this. And she's walked out of interviews. When and she's still alive. Her. She's still alive. Okay. She's still kicking. She's a was huge she movie a... career and stage career as well. What, do you know what other movies she was in? I mean, I told you a few before. Okay, Tom. Uh, you're going to sit there on IMDb while this movie yeah, is no, on. Yeah, I know. And you're going to see some of the other some of the other things. She's not a Charlie's Angel. She, I don't know. She's not a Charlie's Angel. Mm-hmm. She was more high end. Like she was more. <laughs> she's more more high end. What are you trying to say about the Charlie's she's Angels? She's a great ladies? actress. I mean, she was okay. in Chinatown. For gosh sake, she was. I in, don't know what that is. Do you know what Chinatown is with no. Jack Nicholson? No. Oh my god. Who are you? <laughs> Um, but she seems like, even though, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know. You never know who to believe with any of these things, but she does seem a li- this fact made me think she was a little bit of a weird one because, so she has one child, uh-huh. a son, um, who was born in 1980. So he's around our age. Yes. And, um, for years she would always say that she gave birth to her son, uh-huh. but then it came out way after that she actually adopted him. Huh. Yeah. Which I know. I mean, I guess. Like, you know. I guess. I don't know. I just feel like that's a weird thing. So she adopted a child right before she did a movie or at the same time that she did a movie about an adopted oh, child. I, I did not put those two things together. didn't like their mom. Right. I did not put those two things together. Another interesting thing about, uh, and I, while we watch this, I, I very much feel like you should look at some of the facts about the movie. I, Cause I don't want to get too much into some of the facts from the movie because I think we're going to have a lot to talk about once we actually see it. Okay. And you see some of the things that are in the movie. All but right. I will say this, that the, so in the movie, I think you, I don't know if the twins are in the movie, but I know Christina and Christopher are uh-huh. in the movie. We're not named that when they were first. Uh, came into the life of Joan Crawford. Christina was Joan Jr. What? Yes. And then the son was named after the man she was with at that time. Joan Crawford had a lot of husbands. Okay. Um, But then when she divorced the guy, she changed both of their names. (laughs) That's so weird. I know. It is really weird. Joan Jr. (laughs) Yes. Another thing that was weird was that there were two Christophers, but then the one of the par- the parents wanted him back. But she wait, wait, she wait, made wait, them wait, pay wait. for to get. Wait, him so back. she had two. She had adopted two different boys. Two different boys, and one of and they were both named Christopher. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I need to know the timeline of when yeah. she changed the name. She got another boy named Christopher, but she had to. She gave that baby back. It seems to the mom. In one thing I read, it says that she she had someone paid her, and she like took money to give him. Back, uh-huh. like two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which at that time they bought him huge. back from her. I think basically, because so. she definitely paid for the kids. Well, yeah, that's what adoption is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I, but I also think nowadays it's I think a little bit more accepted that yes, you're going to pay a lot to adopt a child. I don't know if it was always the case back in the day. I don't know all the, the stuff with it. Huh? Yeah, very interested well, to watch this movie because, like I said, I don't know that. Like I. I know I watched it. I'm interested to see it because I know that there's some scenes. From, like, as I watched, I watched the um, trailer for the uh-huh. movie. And I very much remembered okay. a lot of the images from it. I have no I have no concept of what the movie looks like or anything. Like, I don't really remember it except for that wire hanger thing. <laughs> oh, I'm excited for you to watch it then because I feel like we're going to have a lot to talk about. Oh, afterwards. I think we will too. I mean, it seems... Weird and fascinating. It is in so many ways. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's go watch this movie. We'll come back. We'll talk about it. And remember, Kim, no, wire, hangers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. What did you think? You've never seen this movie before. Oh, my God. I was blown away. <laughs> <laughs> so you liked it? I mean, I like. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about it? I mean, it was like, it's everything you want a movie. You just can't look away. It's so over the top. There's so much that happens. It's just, it's fascinating to me that it's about real people. <laughs> yep. You're um, going to be doing a lot of, like, online research. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be thinking about this for a long time. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a lot. Yeah. I mean, 
Let's just talk for a second about the fact that it's visually stunning. The outfits in this. Oh because God. it's old Hollywood. Yes, yes, yes. Gorge. Gorge. I mean, amazing, amazing clothing. I want to live in a time where we wear bed coats and sl- <laughs> with long sleeves. See, I see and- something like that. It just looks uncomfortable to me. I'm like, did you really sleep in that? Yeah, but it's just so, like, I mean, everything was a... Everything was so pulled together. I know. It's just, I think that over time, our, in our time, we have decided that we value comfort over style. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For everything sure. looks way, everything's way more comfortable now. The fabrics are better. There's more yeah. give. But at the same time, to like float around your home in a white gauzy gown with a, with a flask and a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Something very, oh, very it, chic about that. <laughs> yes, it sounds amazing to me. Um, it's the, the whole thing, yes, it does make you think about a lot of stuff. I'd say my impression of it, having not seen it since I was a kid, uh-huh. and I definitely remember a lot about it. I think that when I was younger, I certainly remember the parts when she was younger more than when she was older, and I probably stopped watching when she got older, yeah. although I remember some of it. Well, she's mostly younger. It's mostly the daughter, Christina, as a younger person in the movie, and it's played by the same actress the whole time, despite the fact that years are passing. Years are passing, and they have different people playing the younger brother, Christopher. Mm-hmm. So, like, you've first meet this little girl and her brother's a baby and then all of a sudden her brother is maybe two years younger than her but she still looks exact she's still the same actress but i see why they did that because whoever that child actor is is top notch she was incredible she was fantastic she was amazing she looked like a little doll she had this like cute cute little like yeah, little Charity dumpling face. face. Yeah, yeah. And but it, and she was a good actress. She was a very good actress. She was very good. I mean, I think that in thinking back on this movie, I remember it being way more, like I said before, I didn't see that it was funny or campy or anything else. I found it very distressing as oh, a young no. child watching no, no, that. No. Yeah, but I, now as an adult watching it, I'm like, eh, she's not that bad of a mom. I mean, she has a couple no, breakdowns. No, she's a terrible mom, Emily. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> No, First of upset. all, she's she a little upset. She has mental illness. She does. And she does. she's a bit is. of an alcoholic too. And alcoholism. Yes. And she's very like, I mean, she has OCD. Yes. Like crazy. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I take mean, back what I said before. She had some problems. And she also beat the shit out of her daughter with a ca- with a coat hanger. She did do that. She she's did. a really bad mom. Right. You're right. No, she is. I'm not saying that she's not. But I feel like in my memory of it, it was way, depicted way worse. And it in this, it's a little bit more balanced than I think I remembered it. Balanced. Balanced. <laughs> in the sense that it isn't all she's Darth Vader throughout. No, they no. do try and soften her a little bit. They do try and give her some reason for being the way that she is. Um, and Christina... I would say is, you know, I mean, when she gets older, she's a little annoying. (laughs) Yes. But no matter what, I mean, as a kid, okay, so this woman, Joan Crawford, she adopts this girl. Yes. And basically puts her on a pedestal to be this perfect child. But it's but it's very much implied that she's only doing all of this because her career is kind of on the downward slope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she is doing this to... It, there's a publicity factor in all of this. Well, yeah, and vanity is very... is a very big part of her motivation. Sure. Like, she's a vain woman. She is. And I think what's interesting... In the movie, they show that she dresses like the daughter in some of these photo yeah, ops. Yeah, yeah. And in real life, if you look up pictures of the real life Joan Crawford with the kids, mm-hmm. she always dresses like that, okay. which is really weird. To yeah. Me. Well, and I think that there's a sense of, um, I mean, we'll get, kind of get there as it gets closer to the end, but as the daughter gets older and becomes an actress herself, there's definitely jealousy there. Well, I also think she very much has this idea that, well, I have, I had hard knocks in my life. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to, it's part of my responsibility as a mother to make sure that these kids aren't spoiled and to give them some hard knocks in their life. <laughs> sure. And I mean, she says that, mm-hmm. you know, and she doesn't want them to be spoiled and she doesn't want them to have everything. But I also feel like, I mean, I told you one of the biggest things that stuck with me when I was a kid is early on in the birthday scene, mm-hmm. birthday scene. Very much stuck with me. But Christina gets this beautiful doll. And then the mom tells her later, well, you can keep that one, but you have to give all your presents 
away to the kids who live in the, the Orphanage. orphanages. And it's it's said that the, the mom told the press that. So mm-hmm. it's very much a press thing. Yes, yes, yes. But for the little girl, she's like, what do you mean I don't get to keep all of my presents? Like, this sucks. Right. And I remember as a child watching that impacted me greatly. That's That was very, like... Oh, no. Like, if someone made me give back my birthday presents. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, as a yeah, kid, yeah. that's a very big deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she had to choose the one that she liked the best, and all the rest had to be given away. Yeah, Uncle Greg gave her that bracelet. Uncle Greg was Yeah, let's like, talk about the uncles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christina definitely has a very weird view of what an uncle is. Because sure. uncles made out with mommy. Yeah. A lot. So, so Joan Crawford had... Multiple husbands. Four. Four husbands. Too. Yeah. And I don't know which, I don't know if Uncle Greg was a husband or not. Uncle Greg didn't seem like a husband. He seemed like a special friend. <laughs> he was a very special friend. <laughs> um, and um, he was involved in Joan Crawford's life when the children came into the life. And he kind of helped facilitate the adoption because he was a lawyer. Yes. And Joan Crawford, as a single actress living on the fringe, wasn't going to be able to get a child herself which because she was an stupid. undesirable candidate, which is ridiculous. Right. But I mean, it, it, unless yeah. they unless they saw her mental health paperwork. <laughs> well, I was going to say, maybe they knew something. Maybe they knew more than they I were letting so. on. I don't think so. Honestly, mean, think at of, the time. Even in our time, adoption has changed so much. They used to not give children to gay men. Or single women. Yeah. yeah. So adoption's changed quite a bit. But it does say... But I do think that it says a lot that back then, I think... Even in today's day and age with everything else, there's always this thing where you're like, yeah, those are the rules for most people. But if you're a big star, you're going to get that kid if you want that kid. Now, she ultimately did. But my guess would have been that someone like Joan Crawford, even at the time, could have gone into an adoption agency and been like, I know you don't usually give kids to single ladies. Mm. But, I mean, I'm a pretty big star. You know I have a lot of money. So yeah, I don't know. give me one of those kids. I don't know. I and, mean, I mean, she even says, she's like, you're denying a kid a really great life. Right. But at the same time, I mean, the women in Hollywood of that day, like, we, you very much see it when she goes to, like, Metro Golden Mayor or whatever and is being ousted, kind of, because she's getting older. Yeah. And so there, it's definitely, it was definitely, yes, she was making a lot of money for studios. Yes, she was a very wealthy woman, but she was still a woman. Yes. And she was still very much um, prized for her beauty and for what she could bring to the studio. And once that was done. Yeah. She was done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she, I think she definitely was a woman during times that weren't that great. And even, and they kind of showed that too, that even though she was this star who had all this money, you know, there were moments where there were people who had a lot more power than she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and a lot more money than right. she did. And I think she was constantly striving for this perfectionism in her home and in her look. And she kind of felt like if she stayed perfect, she could continue to work and continue to have this career. Right, right. And it's interesting um, because I did, when I was researching this, read a lot more about Joan Crawford. And she's from Texas originally. Her father was a construction worker, left the family when she was really young. Mm -hmm. Um, Her mother had a few different husbands as well. Um, but, she does mention that she didn't have a father either, remember? Yes, but she, I think her one stepfather actually helped start her career because he ran, um, he ran some sort of like theaters or something. So he kind of helped her a little bit. But her name was not Joan Crawford. Her name was Lesur was her last name. But but they wanted her to change it because they thought it sounded too much like sewer. (laughs) I get it. Yeah, I get it too. But they named her through a contest in a magazine where it was like, name Hollywood's next biggest star. And they had people vote on her name, what her name was going to be. And she always said she hated the name Crawford because it sounded too much like crawfish. (laughs) So she didn't like it. From sewer to crawfish. Right. And that's why I thought it was interesting that she named Christina Joan Jr. even for a little bit. But that does lend itself to this idea a little bit more that it was an adoption for um, publicity's sake. Even though, like I said, there were a lot of people who didn't feel, felt like Christina's depiction of what actually happened was not necessarily true. And now it's generally accepted that it's... um, That, you know, it's got a little truth to it and, you know, a little bit of embellishment to it. But even, as I said before, Betty Davis, who hated Joan Crawford, Uh she even came out in defense of Joan Crawford after the book came out. Oh, really? And said, yeah, and was just like, yeah, like, this isn't, this is a little too much. And the sisters, those twins who Uh aren't in the movie, the twins were very much like... 
didn't feel like it was correct at all, huh. said that Christina kind of lived in her own world. Well, it's interesting because at the end of this movie, they, um, like, the, pretty much the last scene in the movie is them, after, after Joan Crawford has died, the brother and the sister, Christina and Christopher, are with the lawyer, and the lawyer's reading the will, mm-hmm. and both of them have been left out of the will. Like, she's basically left them nothing. Right. And Christopher says, well, she always did get the last word. Mm-hmm. And they show Christina being like, does she? Does she? <laughs> the drama <laughs> in this right. movie was so great. I did read that she was worth about $2 million when she died. Okay. So, you know, there's yeah, some no, money there. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Nothing to, you know, I would I would write a tell-all book if someone didn't give me $2 million. I'd be like, <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show you. I'm going to write a book. Um, we need to talk a bit about, like, the high drama scenes Yes. And the most famous one is the famous one with the wire hangers. Yes. What were your thoughts? That scene to me was very, very impressionable on a young Emily. Oh, yeah. Stood in my well, brain a lot. The fact that she makes, so she comes in, she's got like cold cream on her face. So she looks kind of creepy mm-hmm. regularly. And then she comes in and is kind of just, you know, in the children's room, looking at all their clothes. And she spots a wire hanger in Christina's closet. Like a dry cleaner hanger. Right. Now, the funny thing that I did write down while I was watching was was that we had a lot of wire hangers in my house as a kid. We probably only had wire hangers. I think the plastic hangers were... The exception and not the rule in well, my I, house. I was looking at the other hanger. I was like trying to figure out like what hanger was acceptable, and it looked like those ones that were like padded, the like, plushy the ones, the plush ones, but that were like pink and like pillowy. Yes, with the ribbon. Yes, and every once in a while, like I feel like I have a couple of those in my kids' closets yeah. now because some children's clothes come on Came them sometimes. On them. Right, Came right, on right, 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 right. Yes. But these were the 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 good hanger in their household was the pillow hanger. And she did, it does seem as if there was something in her where she did not want to be a dirt merchant. Yeah, so, well, then she, she at one point, she said something about how, like, the girl can, it looks like she's from Oklahoma. <laughs> Or right. something like that. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, Oklahoma. Yeah, sorry, Oklahoma. But Joan Crawford didn't like you. Um, so she she sees the wire hanger and she literally freaks the fuck out. Yeah, she's like screaming and yelling and waking up the, the girl. And she's just like, what did I tell you about wire hangers? Yeah, her delivery in this, I can see why people are... I could see why people watching this at the time were probably like, what is Faye Dunaway doing? Like, yeah. this is crazy. I also see why the drag queens pay homage. Not the drag homage. queens. They're, no, it they're is. They're part of it. The drag, well, drag queens, queens are, do pay homage. Yes. To yes. Um, Joan Crawford. I saw some, you know, like there was some weird article that was like, is RuPaul, you know, highlighting a, a um, child abuser or something? Oh, like, God. you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. So... <laughs> Sure. There's that angle to it as well. But yeah, so then she makes her get up and then she makes her clean the bathroom floor because she's also obsessed with cleaning. Yes. Um, She has a lot of cleaning people. And she goes and, like, she cleans a lot herself. And in the beginning, she's, like, on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor in heels. Yeah, it's pretty great. And, Socks and heels. Yeah. And um, and then she, like, has to check the work of the cleaning people and, like, moves this potted plant. And it's like, you have to clean under the, you have to move the tree before you clean the plant. Or so I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the dirt. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty great. But so she makes little Christina get up and clean. Now, the other thing interesting in this, so she's got a little brother. Yes. And uh, and the little brother always is wearing a little a harness. harness. Campus and harness. you see it when she's a ba- when he's a baby. Yeah. And then you just continue to see him always wearing these little overalls and always wearing they're like leader hosen, what they have this kid in most of the time. Yeah. And then um he always has this little harness on. But then I read and she makes a comment, and I remember this also stuck with me as a kid. She's like, strap yourself back in. And the, the sister re- says that to the, the sister brother. says it to the boy, yeah, yeah, like yeah. strap yourself back into bed. So it turns out that they did that because um, he was always strapped into bed when he was a little kid so he wouldn't get up to go to the toilet. To which I'm like, why wouldn't they want him to use the toilet? They would rather yeah. he peed in the bed. Yeah, that's weird. And I think there's something else <laughs> going on there, but I don't know what it is. Okay. Well, we'll continue to investigate like, that. I assume it probably had to do with one of the uncles or something like that. Oh. <laughs> like maybe he was coming in and trying to try to sleep in her bed or something. You know what I mean? Like he was probably looking for the affection of his mother in the night. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? He was like, like no. We're going to put you back in bed. Although, he can obviously unhook himself. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand it. I mean, it's I don't very, know. very weird. Yeah. The whole thing was very, very weird. Super weird. But yeah, the little girl, there's one scene. So after that, the mom's like losing her fucking mind. She just pretty much just throws Ajax. Comet. Comet. Comet or whatever <laughs> yeah. it was all over this like blue, dark blue tiled bathroom. Right. And she walks out and Christina's there by herself. She's got Ajax on her face and her hair's a big mess. She's sleepy. And she just goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's the best scene in the whole movie. It's the movie. best scene in the whole movie. It was pretty, it was pretty great. Mm. It was pretty great. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, overall, I found it to be a very enjoyable movie. Well, there's another scene. Let's talk about the other abusive things. Like she, the daughter's at the table and the kids are very young and she has them eating like rare meat. Sure. Because she said it's good for them. Sure. The doctor said it was good for them. Which like that tracks for the time. Probably. Yeah. But at the same time, like she... And I had to do that, too, where you just sit at the table till you finished your oh, dinner. Oh, yeah, me too. And um, so she makes her stay at the table, like, all night long. Right. And then, but then she, like, takes the food and puts it in the refrigerator. And then the next night serves it to her again for dinner. Yeah. And she finds her and she's fallen asleep. And she takes it again and puts it back in the refrigerator and then serves it to her again the next day. Oh, yeah. So, like. Abusive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Psychologically she, abusive. She, like, knocks down, um. Not knocks down. She cuts off all of her hair at one oh, point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because she's, like, literally, the little girl is just playing. Pretending to accept an award in the mirror. Right. So she freaks the fuck out. Yeah. And chops off all her hair. And then Christina goes to college or to boarding school, and she makes out with a boy. Um, and, you know, the mom freaks out and says that she's a floozy or something. Right. And she gets mad at the school and says they're running a teenage brothel. Yes. And they take her out of school. Um, but you can also see, so yes, overall, I take back what I said before. Joan Crawford's pretty bad. Okay. In this movie. She strangles her when she comes home. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say the right thing. Okay. <laughs> she's not that bad. She just almost killed her multiple times. <laughs> right. Exactly. So it's fine. It's funny. It made me think, um, because we, what we realized, and I did not realize when we were talking about it in the earlier section, is that that documentary about Gypsy Rose um, Blanchard is actually called Mommy Dead and Dearest. Yeah. So very much related, these two things. I had not remembered that. Yeah. But I also thought about, have you followed that story about the woman who was recently, she's in jail now for abusing her kids. She's she has, a blogger. A blogger. Yeah, on, yeah. And she's on TikTok and, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah TikToker, sorry. That's so that made me blogger. think, the whole thing with the food made me think of her yeah, because yeah. apparently her thing was she's like wouldn't feed her kids. Yeah. And she like made them do hard labor outside when they were young. And I think she also, I've watched some of her things and very much tries to say like this tough love thing of right. you have to teach them you have to teach kids how to do this thing and i just feel like as a parent myself yeah like you definitely have this thing in your head where you you want to teach your kids resilience and you want to teach your kids you know um repercussions mm -hmm. for things you know and like there's one thing that they really dogged this um TikTok lady about where the daughter forgot to bring her lunch to school uh -huh. and she wouldn't drive her lunch to school. Okay. Now that part of it, I'm like, yeah, but she told the school not to give her any food, which is wrong. Like yeah. my thing would be if my thing would be, I'm sorry, you know, right. I told, I, I told you to remember your lunch. You forgot your lunch. You're going to have to go and go to the cafeteria and get the free cheese sandwich. Right. You know, or, I can see that. Or, I mean, in this day and age too, like, it's very, you can put money on the kids, call, you know what I mean? Like there's systems in place so that if your kid forgets their lunch, you can send them the $1.35 or whatever it costs to have the school lunch. Right. And if your kid was like, I don't like the school lunch, you're like, well, I'm sorry. Right. You're going to have yeah, lunch. Yeah, you yeah. have access to food. And also, you, I mean, to have the expectation of a child to just remember every single thing to me is, you know, like they shouldn't oh, be so punished for forgetting something. No. And I think, you know, very much Joan Crawford was punishing Christina for just being a kid and just yeah, playing. Yeah. Like she plays with her dolls and Joan didn't like how she was playing with her dolls. Well, because she was mirroring her language. Right. Which most adults, dolls. I feel like you would see that and you'd be like, oh, I really need to reflect upon my parenting. But instead, Joan Crawford takes her dolls away. Yes. So not not great. No, not great. Um, also, a funny part that I had not remembered in this, which is a true for true fact was that so Christina grows up and she becomes an actress as well. Yes. And she's on a soap opera mm -hmm. called 
The Secret Storm. Dun, dun, dun. So soap operas back then, I don't know if they continued doing soap operas like this in the 80s. I'm sure they don't do it now, but they used to be live. Yeah, I think they're just shot very quickly. They are. Now. So back then, so they show that Christina gets, she's on this soap opera, she's doing well. Um, she gets sick. She has a tumor on her ovary. Right. So she has to be in the hospital for a little bit. And the producer from the show comes to see her at the hospital and Joan Crawford is there. And, um, the producer is just like, well, how long do you think she's going to be in here? Because back then that would have affected yeah, their production because the she's right. not going to be there. Mm-hmm. And Joan's like, I'll call you. We'll figure something out. Well, then you see the next day, Christina's still in the hospital and the nurse is like, well, do you want to turn on your show? And she's like, no, I don't want to see them getting along without me. She's like, oh no, your mom is going to play your role. <laughs> it was great. Amazing. So the mom, so Christina was meant to be playing a 20 year old actress. And I looked it up and the mom was like 63. 60. Yes. 63. And playing a 28 pretending year old. to be this role poorly because they even yeah. show in this that she wasn't doing a good job reading the cards and being live right because she show. was because she was intoxicated and also she said nervous so she, so she couldn't read the cue cards and she was um like kind of out of her depth a little bit they also imply that she's very bad with money well i mean they pretty overtly were like yeah, she's yeah. very bad with money yeah and they just imply it lightly it's no. pretty overt no um that yeah that she's very poor with money and that she um she wasted a lot of it her last husband was the um i almost said the ruler of pepsi the pepsi king of chicago <laughs> the pepsi king of chicago <laughs> so he was the head of pepsi i mm-hmm. think and um when she married when he died like 4 years after they were they got married um, she took over. She still stayed on the board there. Yeah, it seemed like she joined the board of Pepsi, and she d- apparently did a lot of work to promote Pepsi um, out in the community and out in the world. They spent said she spent like hundreds of thousands of hours working on behalf of Pepsi. I'm sure, she did because Pepsi sucks. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Pepsi. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> Now they're never going to be a sponsor of our podcast. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take them if they wanted to. Be. Nope. If Pepsi Cola Corporation mm-hmm. knocked on the door right now and was like, "We'd love to give you some money to talk about how much you love Pepsi," you wouldn't do it. Kim, I have ethics and standards, and you're a Coca Cola girl. I'm a Coca Cola girl. Through. How could I look at myself in the mirror, Kim? How could I look at myself in the mirror every day and knowing that I had taken the money from that disgusting swill, Pepsi? It's just her. <laughs> I'll take the money. <laughs> I'll drink your Do you product. like Pepsi? Yes, I love Pepsi. <laughs> no, I don't. I really don't like it. But I was going to say, we have to break up. We're not <laughs> friends anymore. If you, ugh. Okay. Ugh. But you found a really interesting story about Joan Crawford and Pepsi and our beloved Disney World that, that I thought true. was really interesting. Yeah, so Joan Crawford apparently um, is the reason that It's a Small World exists well, at Disney World. Well, my son would be very sad to know this, but anyway, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. So um, at the time, Joan Crawford approached Walt Disney about adding another, um, building a ride that could, Pepsi could sponsor. It was for it was for the, the World's, World's Fair, Fair, yeah. And they said, what, Carousel Progress mm-hmm. and something else. Lincoln. Which we just talked about in the last episode. Yes. So both of those were already in the um, World's Fair and... Disney was like, oh, I don't really want to do a third ride, but he needed the cash. Yeah, he did. So because he wanted to buy land in Florida for Disney World. So um, he created a ride that Pepsi could sponsor. And it was also in combination with UNICEF. Right. So that's why you have all the children of the world. All the children of the world yes. singing Thank together you. in glorious <laughs> harmony. harmony. Yes. That ride, um, I enjoy that ride. My father is just appalled by it. My husband hates it. My son, famously. Youngest so, son. Youngest yes. son. Uh, <laughs> we took him to Disney and he went on this ride and he was just put his hand in his head and was like crying the whole time. Yeah, it was the first ride of the day and it was a little rainy day. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we thought he was off for a other reason like we thought he was sad about something else and he was just being like cranky yeah 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 Yeah, that's what i thought he was just Uh being a little bit cranky but then we got off the ride and he said i said when what's wrong and he said i'm terrified (laughs) the dolls were singing so he was extremely scared by that by that ride yeah it was sad (laughs) it was really really sad but also kind of cute yeah, also yeah. kind of cute. And then that guy recently like took off all his clothes and ran around inside that the room. That disturbed me. I didn't like watching that He's video. Clearly having some sort of mental break. 
He was. And it's a small world. I know. And he was like climbing in the structures and I was so upset. It made me so anxious that he was going to break something. Oh, yeah. I didn't like it. I also just felt you could tell that he wasn't just some person who was, you know, being an asshole. Right. He was someone who was having a mental break. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. why I felt like it was it would have been very upsetting for me. If like even watching it was a little bit upsetting. Yeah, there were a lot. I mean, there were a lot of people that were filming it who were riding the ride, and like initially the guy was just like walking around inside of it. He had gotten out of his boat. But I also think it was interesting that all in the footage when you see it, I in my recollection of it at least, no one's really yelling at him, which makes me feel like the other people who are on the ride could tell that there was something wrong. Yeah, for sure. So they weren't, like, yelling at him or being yeah, like, hey, yeah. guy, put your clothes on and get off of there. Yeah, like, get away from those kids dolls. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, people weren't upset about it in the normal way. People get upset about things like that. Yeah. They were more like, somebody come help him, come help right, him, come right, help right. him. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. Like, I feel like on all of those rides, Disney knows, like, immediately when something like that's happening. I remember being on a, on the Frozen ride once, mm -hmm. and, like, someone around us, like, either, like, leaned or sat up or stood mm -hmm. up, and immediately over the thing, please sit down. Oh, it's yeah. like there's constantly people monitoring for, like, um, yeah. things going weird. Let me tell you a nice Disney story okay. real fast, because since we've gone in this direction, sure. and, you know, I like it. Um so we were, we're going to Disney. I'm taking the family to Disney soon. Yes. And, um... Me and my middle child were talking about it. I think he saw a commercial or something came on. So I was like, oh, we're going there yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. It's so magical. And Anderson said, in the commercial, there was a there's like a disabled child or mm -hmm. something in the commercial. And Anderson goes, but mom, what about kids in wheelchairs? Can they go on all the rides? And I mm -hmm. said, yes. They yeah. make it so that in Disney, they make it so that everyone can go on all the rides. Mm -hmm. And he goes... That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> no. Yeah. I know. It was nice. It was a nice moment. Yeah. It is cool that, that, that they make that happen. And then, like, people sometimes have to... Don't cry. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> the kids get to go. And they have a great time. And they have so much fun. And Gary Sneeze brings them all. <laughs> and Gary... And sometimes Gary Sneeze brings all the kids, too. He does. It's, it's, we'll get upset. It's I'm beautiful. Not, I know it is. Okay. I'm not really that upset. Don't okay. make the people think that I'm really crazy. It looks like you're crying to me. <laughs> <laughs> Something in my eyes. Just shut up. Get um, away. All right. So back to the movie. So overall, you liked it? I did like it. Would you recommend it to others? Yeah. I don't think anybody... <laughs> I mean, I don't know any others and that will really watch it. Well, I know that, you know, other people in mainly your family, often judge my choices. Oh, and they're going to judge this one 100%. But you're going to really. back me up. I am. I'm going to say it's weird and kooky and you should watch it. Exactly. They it's should crack. watch it. It's one of those movies where I feel as if it's it's such a notorious film and it's uh -huh. a notorious film for a reason. Yeah, and I had no idea. I had no idea the background of it. Like, I knew the wire hanger thing yeah. was like a quote, but I had no idea that this was based on real events. I had no <laughs> idea that this was like based off of a book that this girl wrote or who the people involved were. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, say what you want about the over the topness of Faye Dunaway. She did do a good job. I, yes. She, you cannot look away from her performance no, for the no, whole thing. No, no, no. Even and, when they have her aging and things. I looked it up. She was about 40 when she did this yes. movie. So she plays young. She plays old. I mean, it, it's she does a good job. Yes, it's nutty. But at the same time, she's committed to the part. Well, completely. she definitely is like, this is her POV of who this actress was. I don't... I mean, the movies I've seen Joan Crawford in, she is like an old-timey actress like that you right. know very over the top she's a and dame dramatic. she's a dame yeah so i feel like faye donaway she was method she committed yeah um if she was a jerk to people on the set that's not nice you should always be nice to people yeah but and i you should always Even be if nice you're working to hard but i've also heard those stories of other actors who are method in their films and they refuse to speak to other people on the mm -hmm. set they refuse to speak to their co-stars they don't interact on set with other people I because they're with you. fully committed to the part and then like afterwards they'll be like oh hey it was great working with you you know what i mean like once that they're they're not they're, shitty with them yeah they're just kind of like they just don't I agree with you. Well, I agree with you the fact that there may be a double standard yeah, yeah, going yeah. on here between a woman who is being method and a man mm -hmm. being method. Like, no one's saying Daniel Day-Lewis was difficult on the set. No. Because but I, he was method. Right. But I think that all of those people... 
I don't know what it takes to give a performance like that and where so much is riding on you. Millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. are riding on you being able to do a good job right. in a thing. I understand that that's probably pressure. I would hope that even people who are being method still would be kind to people. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, if you, the whole idea of being embedded into a character like that deeply is that you onset, offset in your spare time, in your free time, when you're home, you are channeling this person and the way this person would be so that you can fully become that character. So if Faye Dunaway is be coming Joan Crawford, who's a real dick, yeah, she's going to be a real dick all the time. Sure. So, well, I, and I guess if you can, if, well, then you have to have everybody on the set understand that. Should yeah. be more understanding of that and say, this isn't Faye Dunaway. This is Joan Crawford. Right. But like, you know how I said before that Joan, that Faye Dunaway will never talk about this yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, She has said that she feels like Joan Crawford haunts her. Yeah. I see that. I, I've seen a lot of the articles come up like, why doesn't uh, Faye Dunaway want to talk about this movie and stuff mm-hmm. like that? I mean, she, you did a good job. I think she did a good job. I think that at the time, they were very upset at the time because they originally started, um, when they were doing the marketing for this, it originally started as a drama, uh-huh. and the marketing was marketing it as a serious movie. But then, because the reception was more people laughing about it, yeah. and it became more like a Rocky Horror, they <laughs> no, changed... it's a serious movie. Right, but they changed their marketing of it. Oh. And a lot of people actually... Some people actually sued them oh. because they changed the marketing from being like the serious movie to being, you know, come see the oh, baddest mother of them all and bring your wire hangers. Oh, they leaned into it because they, there was money to be made and yeah, they did yeah, make yeah. a lot of money yeah, yeah, yeah. on this movie, mm. but people were really unhappy about it. And part of Faye Dunaway's um, contract was they had to promote her for a best actress oh, okay. um, Oscar for this mm. movie. So it was kind of like oh, uh, joked God. about right. and well, I, know, mean, I don't think fair. I do think she did a good job in mm-hmm. this movie. It's intriguing. It holds up. Those eyebrows. I those, mean, those come eyebrows. on. That was, I mean, Joan Crawford committed to that shit. That wasn't Faye Dunaway. Right. That's a look. That is a look. Man, I know. I, I thought about that. Like, why do you, how do you look at yourself in the mirror with those big fake eyebrows and be like, I look my best. My Aunt Helen had big fake eyebrows. Sorry. Because she shaved <laughs> off her eyebrows when she was younger and they didn't grow back. So she always penciled in her eyebrows. They didn't grow back? Is they, that a thing? I... It was a thing for her. They didn't grow back. Okay. But she very it reminded me of my Aunt Helen. Aww. She was an interesting lady. She wore, like, pantyhose with open-toed shoes and these, like, really shorty shorts and these, like, little sets. And then she had this, like, these, like, terry cloth rompers that I, were, like... These terry cloth <laughs> yeah, rompers? Yeah, it was, like, a one-piece, mm-hmm. um, off, no, no sleeve, sleeveless. She wore that with pantyhose and heels? Yeah. And little she kitten was, heels. She was channeling And they're drawn Crawford. on eyebrows. Okay. Yeah. She was a fan of Jim She Crawford. was something else. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like it. I need to see a picture of her. I'll look for one. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe Aunt Helen needs to be on Instagram. She does. Because <laughs> <laughs> she sounds fantastic. She was. Um, do you have anything else to say about this wonderful movie that no. I shared with you today? I do thank you for uh, bringing it to Yay, me, though. That makes me happy. Always happy to share something that you actually enjoy. I did enjoy it. Good. Next time I'll try and make, get one that you, you hate. Oh, good. Balance it out I can't bit. wait. Um, so you want to hear how James Spader connects to this lovely, I lovely do. film. I do. I wish you luck. <laughs> that actually wasn't as hard okay. as I thought. Um, so Faye Dunaway was uh, in Chinatown, oh, yes, famously, mm-hmm. with Jack Nicholson. Also a great movie. Highly recommend okay. it. It's, you know, sure. peak, peak Nicholson. Uh. Um, so James Spader and Jack Nicholson appeared together in the film Wolf, oh. which was rele- released in 1994. Okay. That's a horror film yeah. um, in which Jack Nicholson plays the lead role and um, he becomes a werewolf. Yes. <laughs> and James Spader plays a, a character um, who is Jack Nicholson's protege, who betrays him. Protege Wolf. I think he's just like a protege, like in his normal life. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> maybe doesn't know that he's a wolf, but okay. then he betrays him when he. Fi- I think when he uh, finds out he's a wolf. I haven't seen this movie. Okay, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, that's when he betrays him. When he's like, "You're a werewolf, Wait a second, buddy. You're a wolf. Like, I'm gonna have to tell somebody about this. I can't have a protege that, or a wolf as a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't stand by this at all. Right. 
<laughs> but the film blends elements of horror, romance, and comedy, and is known for its unique take on the werewolf genre. Oh, unique. Yeah. So there Great. you go. That's the movie. All right. That's the episode. What do we have to tell people, Kim? We have to tell people to follow us on Instagram at Confidently Controversial. And while you're on there, you should probably follow Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I mean, she went to a play yesterday in New York City. You got to see what <laughs> she's up to. And you didn't even know about right. it. Right. Oh, my God, people. Yeah. So go ahead and do that, peeps. Uh, TikTok. We're on Confidently Contro. Yes. And um, we do have a website where we have links to all of our episodes, and that's confidentlycontroversial.com. You did such a good job. Thanks. You're welcome. What else do we have to say? Well, we just have to say this, Kim. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring into this week ahead of you. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. It's Friday. Yeah. We're bringing it into the weekend and Uh into next week. Uh I want you to have the confidence of a Joan Crawford eyebrow. (laughs) If only. (laughs) However, yeah, do not abuse children. Okay. That's controversial, and you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't get upset about the wire hangers. That's what the dry cleaner provides because they're inexpensive. Okay? Right. Okay? Yeah. It's not their fault. It it's isn't not their your kid's fault. fault. And it doesn't mean they're dirt or anything. And I don't think any child that I know knows what kind of hanger they're using. So Ag- stop. Agreed. Agreed. All right. Thank you, guys. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.